Hello everyone, welcome back to Beyond the Max. And it's me, Adam, again, coming at you with another review. This time, for Siege Ultra Magnus. Man, this guy's pretty darn awesome. Um, you can see with the head, we have some really nice silver on the stacks here. Really nice silver in on the face. Face plate for the better to focus. Yeah. I guess I can't really focus on the white background. Let's try this. See the nice blue eyes in there. The nice red rockets. Nicely painted silver gun. It also has little guns on the sides. On the sh um, legs. This guy's pretty G1 accurate. Cybertronian truck, but still pretty G1 accurate. Um, he's got some battle damage on his chest. Some on his thighs. Some on his feet. And then coming to the back. Got just a bunch of... This was not here originally. I custom painted that. That was just red, plain red. This is battle damage that was already put on the figure. And then the silver right here on the crest was not there originally. I also custom painted that. It was just blue. So just to show you guys how it would look if it was silver. I honestly think it looked better when it was blue. But to each their own. Um, so... Now, moving on to the Blast Effect compatibility. My second favorite part of the review. We've got the tips of the rocket launchers. Go bang and bang. We also got, of course, the gun. Could go blam. Then, I also made a silencer for the gun. It's basically just this Lego piece. I don't know what Lego pieces are called. I'm not really into Legos anymore. It was tan. It was this kind of tan all around. The stripe was like on the side. So I just plug it in here. It works. It gets the job done. It is not Blast Effect compatible. It's like the same exact size as Blast Effect. But anyway, you can already see there's a Blast Effect port right there that I totally missed. That's on either of his shoulders. There and right there. Then you also have little ports right here. Put on either side on either side. Blast effects. You also have these ports right here on his gun. I guess you can make his gun look like it's getting shot. Let's have one right here. That's mainly for combining all the weapons. Which, to be honest, is just you clumping a bunch of weapons together, and I don't think it deserves to be seen in this review. Bam. Shot right there. Bam. But, just so you know, it does, all the weapons can combine to make one, even though it doesn't look the best. I guess it works. Bring the camera down. Also, have blast back points here and here. And you also have those rocket feet. Signature rocket feet. You actually have two ports. This one and this one. I don't know why you would put it on that. Because it's kind of like back there. So. Yeah, I usually just use these. Look like it's flying. It. And of course, just showing the blast effect compatibility with the pistols. Or with the kind of guns. Got that. Come on! There we go. So yeah, just bringing in a closer look on all the weapons. I guess I can show the combining feature. Just taking this off. It is molded in red plastic. It was painted silver, so the handle's red. And this is silver, which is really nice. Got a nice stock going on there. 
barrel was nicely detailed with some spiral detail in there. Um, and then it kind of looks like there's a magazine on top for some reason. But we're now moving on to these guns. Um, they're basically mirrored blasters. They're hollow on one side, but on the other, they're nicely sculpted, and they have silver on the barrels. Then you got the rockets. Very Generation 1 inspired, which is nice. So, just showing the combining gun feature thing. There are two ways you could do it. You could either plug them on here or here. Without the silencer thing, I like to plug them in in the back like so. Like that. And like that. So it kind of looks flush in the back, which is nice. And then you also put this on right here. So it does just look super ridiculous. But showing how it looks in his hand. Oh no! Yeah, the rockets are kind of loose on there. Since there's, they're meant to be angled around on his shoulder, so they have to be a little looser on the looser side. So you've got that going on. This looks kind of ridiculous, but... Just getting in a little bit of blast effect power here. Let's have this one right here. Plug that on. Put this one right here. I hope this works. This will be super cool. Um, come on. Okay, we got that one. We got that one. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Um, and we just gotta put this one here. I don't know why. I really want to see what this looks like. No. Okay. I'll just put that one on we have one more no no i don't know why i'm just determined one more blast effect yeah. where are you blast effect here it is and for the finishing touch ta-da oh ta-da there we have fully armored Ultra Magnus shooting his horrorous gun. Honestly, if I was facing this, I would be absolutely terrified. But just all that time just to put blast effects. Uh, now just plugging the shoulder cannons back, the shoulder missiles back on. As mentioned earlier, you can rotate them 360 degrees. So yeah, you could angle them all around. For the blasters, like for the double blasters, you can plug them on the sides for storage. But then I like to put them on the forearms, kind of like that. They also could plug into the hands, just showing that off. Do that kind of thing or this kind of thing. I like to put this one in his hand and then this one in his forearm so I could plug in his gun. So yeah, that's pretty cool. Um, yeah, now for a robot mode comparison, here we have him with Optimus Prime. Honestly, he looks all, like, decked out. Then we got him with, um, another leader class war for Cybertron. Siege Astro Train. These two Siege leader class I got at Ross. So, if you're looking for Siege or for Cybertron, you should check your Rosses. They have good prices on them. Trust me, the leader class was $17.99. It's less than a Deluxe. Speaking of Deluxe, here is Deluxe Shockwave. Netflix Deluxe Impactor. And just because, next to Megatron. Who brutally killed him in Netflix which sucked. Ultra Magnus is like my favorite besides Optimus Prime. It goes Optimus Prime, then Ultra Magnus for the Autobots. Then we have Soundwave. 
Then we've got Star Scream. So yeah. Pretty much it for the robot mode comparison. Now, um, let's go on to articulation. The head's on a ball joint. Look up and down. For some reason, it doesn't seem to like to stay looking up. But it rotates all the way around, which is nice. Arms rotate all the way. You also got a hinging out to the side motion. Bicep rotation. 90 degrees of elbow bend. 360 degree waist swivel. Then the legs are on ratchets. Those ratchets could kick 180 degrees forward. And the ratchet back is limited in this mode due to this thing being in the butt. But yeah, you could basically only go to the back that far in this mode. And then you can do the Chinese splits. And to accommodate the Chinese splits, you could also have ankle tilt going all the way down, which is kind of crazy. If you wanted to do that, just showing off the ankle tilt early. I also got thigh rotation. Which is nice. The, nine, the elbow bend or knee bend is under 90. I mean, it's really all you need, to be honest, for such a bulky figure. Having him a little with deeper knee bend would kind of make him unstable. But just taking off these buttons, they're kind of annoying me. And as you can see, his feet are molded. Like this, this ankle tilt is already activated. You can't, that's as far in as you can stand for him. So it's either always a shoulder width stance for him or a pretty wide stance. So you can put in more ankle tilt, get that kind of pose out of him. So yeah. Now moving on to his white Optimus Prime mode, which I think is pretty cool that they added this. I mean, I hope they added something like this since they did just do a parts forming guy. I mean, I don't really mind the parts forming thing as much as other people do, but basically what you're going to do to achieve the next white Optimus Prime look is untab the chest piece from the, from the front, lift this up, untab the back, put that to the side, untab the shoulder pieces, put them to the side, take this um, flat piece, pull it down, Rotate it around and push that forward. Take out the gun for now. You can flip this forward. Untab this. Flip that out. And tab it. It's nice and securely pegged in there, which is good. And then flip out the. Take out the legs. Then essentially what you're going to want to do is now flip out the heel spurs so the back of his feet are supported. Then what you're going to do is untab these on either side. Untab this, flip around the head, tab it back in. And then tab the side of arms back in. And there he is in his white Optimus Prime mode. And he looks really good, to be honest. His shoulders are a little broad, but... It's mainly to accommodate the Ultra Magnus look. So coming in on the details, I think he put the the head sculpt, like the sculpt itself, is a little better on the head for this guy than it is on the regular Optimus Prime. Just bringing in Optimus here, you could see like the little spikes on his head. I don't know how to describe those. A little stubbier here and they're a little longer here and like side by side with their legs together from back to back this is not a very even thing but yeah you can see Optimus is still a little taller at least in this mode in the other mode you're able to see significantly taller how Ultra Magnus was but now, it's 
move on to more of the details. As you can see, as the blue on the face plate, then blue on the crest. The sides were originally just white. I painted those silver. So just to show how it looks silver, if you guys want to do that. The smokestacks were originally just white. I had to do them silver. It's just in my nature, OCD. The grill was the same exact color as this, which is a really nice color. They backed it by silver to make it look like this. I really like that for the windows. I'm keeping that at least for the windows, but for the grill, I'm just I painted it with um, um, paint markers. Then you also have this nice teal thing going on. You got the battle damage on the shins. This was this nice silver's there. I painted the air vents just to make them look a little more like a white version of Optimus Prime. Oh, and there's something we forgot to do. Just gotta bring this forward. Line this like it looks like a spine piece. Hinge this up and tab it in. That compressed number one that makes it look more that makes it look like he doesn't have like a Kim Kardashian butt and also so that he has it up here and it aids the articulation, which is good. So he also has the headlights, the yellow headlights there. Moving stuff off to the side. Got the wheels there nicely. You have these things sticking out. Those are for both truck mode and for combining him with his armor. But anyway, I honestly really like the whole parts forming feature. It makes him, it kind of reminds me of Power Up Prime from Transformers 2. Like the Jetfire and Optimus Prime combination. But anyway, moving on to the articulation. Heads on a ball joint could look up and down. Rotate all around. Rotate the arms all around. You could hinge him up to the side. Like so. Rotate the bicep. Something I also forgot to mention in my, um, the other articulation thing was that he has wrist rotation. Basically, it's basically all the same in this mode. Still 90 degrees. Rotation at the wrist. Basically, everything's the same except for when you get down to the lower body. The kick forward is the same all the way. And the kick back is, is all the way now. He, originally, it was just like this or something. But now he could do the banana splits. And there's something, another something a little different he could do. Um, with that, we have, aren't going to get into that until a little bit. He could, of course, do the Chinese splits. Which is nice. It's a little back heavy, but you can still do it. And then you have 360, or not 360, but you have thigh rotation there. Then you still have that under 90 degree knee bend. It almost looks like 90 in this mode, but it isn't. And then you also have the the heel spur that could go down. This helps for running poses. And get him in a natural thing. Like, especially for running poses, as when th this foot is forward and this one's back, you could put him put it like that. It kind of supports the heel a little bit. Bend the knee like so. So yeah, that kind of helps. Because if you didn't have that, fall back. But and then you have the angle tilt. This one isn't as exaggerated as with the ultimate robot mode, the Ultra Magnus, as it was able to go all the way. And they aren't molded to be angle tilt, with angle tilt, so they're molded so you can stand them up straight this time. And the angle tilt's a little limited, but still, it's not, it's not the worst that I've seen. This is great angle tilt, to be honest. I don't know why I'm dissing it. Um, but yeah, it gives you a nice little stance for him. Bringing in his gun. I haven't really found a way to put in the... I mean, you can put the rockets there, but they're really loose. Um, this is kind of what I've come up with for storage for the guns. Um, instead of having the guns, like, facing down like this, you do it the other way. Put the tab right there, and you just...
tab them on it. So, kind of hides away the wheels if you're someone that doesn't like to see the wheels there. To be honest, I like the wheels being there. Um, but another thing it does that's kind of cool is that since those like weird, horrible things are just kind of sticking out, um, to be honest, it doesn't really bother me at all. But for people that does bother, you could just peg this in. And then it just makes the whole thing looks like makes the whole thing look like it's supposed to be there. So yeah, that's kind of cool. And then since he has forearm pegs, we can put the rocket launchers on there. But they don't stay because the clearance is not all that good, all that great, so it doesn't work. And the shoulders don't have much clearance either, so that doesn't really work. But anyway, yeah, it's basically it for this mode. Oh yeah, I also forgot to mention a really nice Autobot symbol there. It's backed by silver, so you're able to see it a lot easier. Now, we can move on to his transformation into his transport truck mode. So, basically what we're going to want to do is first flip in the heel spurs. Now we're going to want to bring the legs all the way up. And then there's like this little tab that will go into there. Do that on the other side. Then you'll tab the feet together. Bend the arms at 90 degrees. Rotate the waist. Oh wait, what am I saying? Yeah, you have to rotate the waist, but first you have to... This would have been easier if I didn't put the legs up. So yeah, you just do that and then Bring this down, close that back, put legs back, tab them back in, you're just going to rotate the waist, put the arms forward so that you could untab them, then once you untab them, it's kind of like the, it's kind of like this um, Netflix sound wave where you have to line these up and just keep the arms straight so you could tab them back there. So yeah, this is kind of like Netflix sound like. Then you just gotta bring this whole section forward. Like so. Then you're gonna rotate the wrists. So there's that. Then what you can do is open up this cavity here. And this is for transformation to hinge in the head and all. But I find it kind of cool that you could do this to store the Matrix in there if you wanted to reenact from the 1986 movie when he, the Matrix was passed to him. But anyway, getting back to transformation, fold in the head, close it back up. Then there he is in his cab mode. Yeah, the weakest thing about it is hands just hanging back there. But since he has a... A carrier with him it disguises it disguises his hands and it's not the main problem in this mode he rolls really well the rolling get, becomes a little bit of an issue when we bring in these the rest of the parts so I'm just putting this off to the side for now let's bring in these So you should have the two shoulder pieces. Um, just make sure that all the weapons are detached. You should have the shoulder pieces, the two leg pieces, two arm pieces, and the two and the one chest piece. So what you're gonna want to do first is untap this, and you're gonna bring this out and unfold it all basically. Do that to this one also. Fold it all. Then you're going to want to close this up. To be honest, you don't really even need these pieces. You could totally disregard these if you don't want them. Honestly, they just be get in the way. But you could use them. I'll show how you use them. You just want to untab this back piece. 
press this, untap that, and you should have like a platform looking thing. Then you're going to want to take this, rotate this piece down. It's on either side. Like so. Then you're going to slide these together because there's this piece and there's like a slider thing here. It snaps onto there. So it should look like that. Now, what I recommend doing is bringing this in. And as you can see, there is this piece, this like slider piece here, and then this piece. This goes into there, and then this slides into here. This you need to use two hands for, just because it's kind of hard. Line that up, and then kind of hold this at this angle. You have to be very careful and be very slow. Then you take this and then tab that in on the other side. Wow, I'm very surprised I actually got that first try. Usually it takes me multiple tries. So yeah, that should be, should look like that with its head just popping down there. Now, just getting a proper angle. Using this, we're gonna, oh, that's just that. We're gonna slide this little like notch right here into this, which should allow, should kind of snap into place. Now it looks like that. Then these pieces are gonna snap into these pieces. So just, so just bringing this back for now for clearance. Kind of just connect this like so. Should look like that now. Now, this is why I'm saying you don't really need these. These are just just thrown on there, put on there, because I don't have anything else to do with these. So what you're gonna do is bring this forward. If you're gonna use them, just tab them in like this. There's this little port here, and I'll go into there. Tab them in like this. Like so, then what you're gonna do is take this, and you're gonna snap this into the little like spinal cord piece. I like to angle this down, bring this in, then snap that in. It's not snapping in for some reason. Usually you just have to adjust everything else to make sure everything else is aligned. And yeah, should just snap into place. Like so, and then you just gotta bring it all. Oh my god. It's not snapping. Why isn't it snapping? Hold on. Just one second. There we go. <sighs> it's always on camera. Always on camera. But anyway, now bringing this back, now we can kind of snap it in. It should snap in like that. Then now you're just going to close this up like so. You're going to tab it in on multiple places. So the first place you're going to want to tab it in is right here. You're going to want to make sure all this is flush. I'm just going to tab, use these little notches and put them into here. Tap that in on either side. And then we're gonna take these and put them into there on either side, like so. Then you're gonna take these. You're gonna go into these little notches. Tab in on either side. Then you just press them in, and they kind of lock into place. And there he is in his car carrier mode. Then, this really does it, honestly. Um, you could just plug in his rocket launchers on either side. And you could plug in the guns here. There's ports back there also. And if you don't like the overkill look, you could just fold in the 
those which kind of disguises them well these you kind of just flip in i guess like that um for the gun can't really you just plug it in up on top there or in the back here but just to show off the whole car carrying thing we've got cyberverse rc here put it on top she fits nicely you could fit about two on here depending on the size just bring her and then ss49 bumblebee yeah those two these two are able to fit in optimus prime's trailer so those are some of the smaller um alt modes i have I'm just bringing in my old bumblebee I used to use. Like, smaller guys like this fit a little better. But either way, I think this works either way. It's really nice. Unfortunately, you cannot open the back. It's just molded in. And you, and besides, you can't really fit anything in there. If you see, there is no real space to put anything in. Like, I've tried to put this guy in there, and it barely worked. This thing is... SS49 Bumblebee is pretty small. And this is how small this guy is. So, he's pretty small. But anyway, moving on to the details. We've got the light still, the nice window, which... This was the same color as this, as mentioned earlier. Got the battle damage with the nice light stat. Dang, this camera is not focusing. Got the Autobot symbol. Got the carrier. Typical carrier, like safety stuff. I don't know what to call it. And we got the back here. The feet are kind of just sticking out. Kind of look weird because they're angled because that's how they're molded in. Then of course you got all the wheels, so you can turn all. It's mostly just the back wheels and forward wheels rolling. You could press it down to make all the wheels roll. Oh, now they're all rolling. Anyway, now let's move on to the vehicle mode comparisons. And as seen earlier, here he is with my Bumblebee and RC. And that scale actually works pretty well. Um, we've got also Studio Series 68 Leadfoot. He is significantly bigger than Bumblebee, just showing that off. And then, showing him off with another larger figure. Series with Nemesis Prime in his trailer. So, I've seen they're about the same size in length. The Earthrise Optimus in his trailer slash Nemesis in his trailer. They're about the same length as Ultra Magnus. So that's pretty cool. I'm just taking that off to the side. Um. Just really quick showing my the Cyberverse Seeker next to him in his vehicle mode, or yeah, jet mode. Here he is with the, like, I think this is Warrior Class. This is the set of four Seekers. Here's the Star Scream that comes with it. So you can see it's pretty big leader, at least in its truck mode. So now. Moving on to transformation back, of course, we're just going to basically remove everything and then put it all back together. Untab this little piece right here on the front. And you got this piece at the bottom, you untab. Either side. This naturally kind of comes out, so you just put that out to the side for now. Well, actually, you know what, let's move on to this first. What you're gonna do is untab this, untap this, tab them into place like so. You're gonna collapse this, rotate this around, then hinge this up, bring down the legs, press this, 
kind of you need to use a little force to rotate the wrists. Honestly, the whole wrist thing you don't really need to do. It's just a filler for an extra step. So yeah, better use in this white Optimus mode. Oh, heel sprays. Almost forgot. So yeah, back in his white Optimus Prime mode. Now to prep him for being combined as Ultra Magnus again, just flip back in the heel spurs. Then you're gonna wanna um, bring this forward. Bring this down. Sorry if you can hear my brother jumping. He's a little hyper today. Tab that back in. Untap these. Untap this. I really like how they did the whole com um, like prepping for combining. Because it's not necessarily just throwing a bunch of tarts on him. You have to prep him a bit. So yeah, now let's put him off to the side. And let's move on to transforming this thing. Just continue untabbing everything. I've got these to do next. Right here. Untap those. They're super difficult to do. You have to do it at the right ankle. Right ankle. Angle. I keep saying ankle. Um... But what I like to do is actually untab this part first, and then this will kind of untab, and then you have these, the, those annoying things left. So just flip that in. Still got these left to do. Not coming out. Yeah, you're basically essentially just ripping it apart. these pieces off honestly this is a pretty durable figure considering how much ripping apart you have to do so yeah once you have that ready back to the side and tap this if it's still connected and bringing these in basically what you're going to want to do is once it's, you just flip this in once flip these in then flip this took me a while to memorize that but now i remember just do the first one and you kind of split it in half and you fold it up. Then the last final thing for prepping is just folding this in either side. Now you're ready to bring in the main body. So you're gonna bring in these pieces, put that on either side. You're gonna want to almost forgot this piece for prepping. You can also take the shoulder pieces, put them in there, either side, open this up, either side. The battle damage goes on the inside of the hand, and then the like um, longer piece goes on the bottom. So this goes on this side because the battle damage is on the inside. Just opening that up and tapping it in. There's a little port is where this will, this little, it'll go into that port. Plug it. Should go in nice and securely. Close back up. Then finally, we just have the last piece to go. What you do is you take this and it will snap onto what I call the spine. I don't know why, it really looks like a spine. You kind of put this, I like to put it all the way up, it kind of helps me a bit. And you hinge this down. And once that's down, you can kind of hinge it back down, angle it, and tap this in. And there he is back in his Ultra Madness mode. And putting back the rocket launchers. And giving him his guns on the sides of his feet. And plugging in the gun. So yeah. Oh, RC, get out of there. So moving on to some final thoughts. Um, 
yeah, this guy is really good, and I really, with Kingdom coming out, with the Kingdom Ultra Magnus, honestly, I'd say, I don't have him in hand, but from what I've seen, I think that if you're looking for an Ultra Magnus, that one is the better one, but if you go to Ross and you find this guy, I think you should definitely pick him up. He's worth more than $17.99. Um, so yeah, if you if you don't find him at your Ross, that's okay. The um, Kingdom version is a little more G1 accurate. But then, again, like I said, if you find him at Ross, he's definitely worth it. Do not hesitate. Um, so yeah, I hope you guys like this. and Bye. Have a nice rest of your day.